In the following video, we're going to examine how to use our gravity calculator to assist us with finding the maximum minimum values of a quadratic function. And so the example we're going to use is y equals negative 5x squared plus 40x plus 1200. So the first thing you want to do in your graphing calculator is you want to input them in your y equals. So y equals. In y1, we're going to do negative 5x squared plus 40x plus 1200. Now before I hit graph, I want to examine this function. Use some of our skills that we've developed so far in this video lesson on how to determine what our window size is going to be. So let's go back to the problem itself. And we look at this. Let's examine some of the easy and quick parts of this function. We notice that our a is negative. And that means our graph is going to be opening downwards. And so if we have our graph opening downwards, we notice that our function is going to have the vertex as a maximum point. And so I'm going to make a little note that since a is negative 1, since a is less than 0, the graph has a maximum value, not a minimum. And the other piece of information I want to look at is our c. Our c is 1,200. And remember, your c value represents your y-intercept. And so your y-intercept is 1,200. And that's important to see before you put everything in your graphing calculator. And so make a note as well, so I'm going to erase this information, is you know, a is less than 0, which means I have a maximum value. And I'm going to have a y-intercept at 1,200. And now, let's focus on our calculator for this. So we have our calculator. We type in our function. If I hit graph as is, look at what happens. You don't see anything on your graph. We cannot see what our function is going to to look like. And so some students will be very confused at this moment. But the reason why you can't see this is your y-intercept is 1,200. And if we were to look at our window size, so here's our window button, I mean, our x max and x min is from negative 10 to 10. You know, our x scale is 1. Our y minimum value is negative 10, but our y max is positive 10. I mean, if my y intercept is 1200, I can't even see my maximum value. So I want to go beyond 1200 on my calculator for my y max. I mean, you could change your x min, your x max if you want, but I'm going to leave it alone because I haven't seen anything involving those yet. I can keep my y min where it's at as well if I want. I'm going to change my max. My max, you know, needs to go beyond 1,200 to be safe because remember the graph is an upside down U. And so my y-intercept can occur anywhere. So I want to go beyond 1,200 for this. So I'm going to try just picking a number. I see 1,200 is my y-intercept. I'm going to go beyond that 1,200. I'm going to try, let's just try 1,600 and see what happens. But I can't just hit graph now. That would just mess things up. And the reason why is because your y scale right now is set as 1. And so if you think about it, that means you're going to have 1,600 tick marks using that y scale. So we want to change our y scale. I'm going to try and change my y scale, and I'm going to do 100. That way I can see 16 tick marks, and I can go from there. So if I hit graph, and so let me just take this is my first image, and we'll readjust it as we go through. If I hit graph right now, now I can see my problem. I see I have a maximum point here at the vertex. I could use this if I want right now to find my max and my min, or if I wanted to, I can change my x coordinates. Right now, I don't see the symmetry very well. So if I wanted to, I can change the x-coordinates for it. 
I can try going to an um, you know negative 10, maybe go to 20. I can change my scale to two for these. And we can see what happens for that. And so now, let's see, that looks nicer. I got a better U shape for it. I can see most of the graph. So I'm going to keep that window size for it. So let me delete this one. So here's my window size for reference. Now to find your maximum minimum point, if you ever want to find anything on your graph, what you, where you go is above your trace button, you see the word calc. If you ever want to find any visual point on this graph, you always go to that calculate menu. So you hit second calc and look at your options, value, zero, minimum, maximum. And so I'm going to choose option four. This is why it's important for us to identify if our graph had a max or a min right away. Now, we're only going to do an example of a maximum, but the steps we use for this are going to be the same as if we did one involving a minimum value. So whatever we're doing here works for both of them. So I'm going to choose my max option, option four. So hit enter. Now it's asking you left bound. And what left bound means is to mark a point to the left of the vertex. Anywhere to the left, but I want to be safe. You know, my vertex could be here, could be here, could be here. So I'm just going to keep using my left arrow and going beyond that vertex. So this is a safe distance away. So, you know, left bound means mark a point to the left of the vertex. And then if I go back to the calculator, mark a point by hitting enter. Now it's telling you right bound. But notice when you hit enter, it put a little cursor here. And this is telling you, it's even pointing in the direction of, okay, you're telling me the vertex is somewhere over in this direction. So that's why it's asking you to do right bound, is you want to mark a point to the right of the vertex. So I'm going to use the right arrow. Make sure I'm past the vertex, which I am. And so that's what right bound means. And when you hit enter there, again, you notice it puts another cursor pointing in this direction. So you're, the calculator is telling you right now, okay, you're telling me the vertex is between these two arrows, which it is. So now it's asking, can you guess where it's at? And so you can move the cursor close to where you think the vertex is. And again, we hit enter. And we see our calculator actually tells us what our maximum value, what our vertex is. Our vertex, the calculator says 4.0000016 and y equals 1,280. So I'm going to grab this and we're going to focus on now just this picture. So if I were to ask right now, you know, what's the maximum value, you should know it's the y value of the vertex. And so my maximum value is 1,280. Now, the problem with your calculator is it's not I say, always accurate, but your calculator for this one, this is a good example to go over for technical difficulties you may face. The x coordinate of the vertex, if I were asked for the vertex, it is not 4.0000016, 1,280. It's actually 4, 1,280. There are times where your calculator will put in you know, the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0s, or there are some calculators that may read 3.9999997. You know, here you would round up to 4. Here you round down to 4. So there does have to be some common sense when it comes to analyzing your calculators. You can't trust them 100%. You need to trust yourself for it. But the following video was used to show you the different steps in finding the vertex of a quadratic function by using your calculator. There are going to be moments where you have to change your window size. And so it's important you look at y intercepts or even a vertex for that. Um, it's important you know either it's a maximum or minimum. So you're either going to use option three or four in the calculate menu. Left bound means mark a point to the left of the vertex. Right bound means mark a point to the right of the vertex. Notice it tells you there's two arrows here, and it's saying you're telling me the vertex is between these two, and it is. 
So that's good. And then guess, move it close to it. And when you do that, your calculator will give you the coordinate of the vertex. Have some common sense on what the value is here. If it was 4.17932, okay, you would round that to, you know, 4.18. But since you see repeating zero, or you may have repeating nines, you're going to actually have to understand that means it's the number four for this. And your maximum value here is a 1,280, 1,280. So I hope this helped you figure out how to use your calculator to assist with finding the vertex of quadratic functions.